So, hello ladies. Hello all you gorgeous ladies out there. You wonderful single ladies. My name is Izzy and welcome to my channel. This is my first video and I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something or I hope you can take something that might be that you'll find useful to you and could help you. Mind you, this is me after recording the entire video without actually pressing record. <laughs> Losing daylight and everything. Anyway, let's jump into the video. Okay. So, what I wanted or what I want to talk to you today about is the concept of being single and happy. Are you single and are you happy? I, for one, can say that I am. I can truly say that I am single and I am happy and I was not able to say this for a very long time in my life. For years, I was desperate to be in a relationship and, um, I was lonely and I was sad and I was depressed that I wasn't getting into relationship. How many of you can relate? How many of you out there are just praying every day, God, send me my husband, send me my boyfriend or whatever. How many of you are like that? I spent so much time in my life doing that. But how, how did I get out of that mindset? How did I reach where I am today. How can you reach that point? How can you say, hey, I am a beautiful and happy single woman? Well, first thing is that's important is to identify those things that are making you unhappy. You know, whether or not you're in a relationship, what is it? What is the particular need in your life that is driving your desperation to be with a man, right? For me, there were two main reasons that I, that was causing me to be a miserable single woman. The first was that I had a very low self-esteem, right? I had no self-worth whatsoever that I felt like I was very ugly. I felt like I was unlovable. I felt like I was not worth anybody's time. I felt like I was useless and I felt like I was a failure as a human being and as a mother, oh, the guilt that came with all of that, it was immense. So for a very long time in my life, I, because all around me, I was seeing gorgeous women, all my friends that were beautiful were just like, she would step out of the house and 10 men will be attracted to her. Men were giving her things or giving my, all these beautiful women, she just had it easy. Everything they can get, they wanted. Like life just seems to be easier for the beautiful people. You know, that's how I felt. And so I, I felt like, okay, so... Only good-looking people get into relationships. So, if I can get a man to fall for me, that would mean that I wasn't ugly. That would mean that I wasn't useless, and that would mean that I was worth something in life. So I, I was desperate to find somebody to prove to me that I was worth something, to prove to me that I wasn't 
part of the cesspit pool of life. Needless to say, I couldn't find that. It's not to say that I was never in a relationship or anything like that, but I could never make a relationship work because I couldn't believe anything that anyone told me. If a man ever said to me, you are beautiful, even though I wanted to be in a relationship to prove that I was beautiful, when someone told me, you're beautiful, or you look good, or you're cute, or you're pretty, or you look okay today, I felt that they were lying. I just could not accept that from anyone. So that drove so much insecurities, like... I could not be secure in a relationship. I would, when I was in a relationship with someone, I would always feel like, like they were, they were always looking for someone else because I just was not enough. I'm not enough for them. So, so it'll cause so much negative things in the relationship that ultimately I just couldn't make a relationship last or I would drive the man away with my desperation. People can literally smell desperation. It's a disgusting odor. Trust me. But anyway, so that was one of my, that was my first reason for wanting to be in a relationship. The second reason for me wanting to be in a relationship and not why I was so unhappy as a single woman was because I was, I reached, I was at a point at one time in my life where I could not take care of myself. I had become a single mother, you know, ended the relationship with my, my child's dad and he was not helping me financially. I... Yes, I had finished university, but I couldn't get a job. Um, I couldn't take care of him. Uh, I started medical school, but I couldn't finish medical school because I couldn't afford medical, medical school. So on top of not feeling like enough as a human being, I had no money. And I felt like I needed to be saved. I needed to find a savior. You know, and that savior would be a man because if only I can get married, if only I can have a husband, then I would have this big financial burden taken off of me. You know, I even if the man couldn't afford to allow me to be a housewife, at least I can have somebody that I could share the bills with and Maybe I can go back. I, while I'm in school, I can. He, he could be home in the evenings, you know, after work, and I'd have somebody to leave my son with, you know. It's not that I was trying to. I've never ever felt the need that to find a father for my child because I was fortunate enough to have strong male presence in my life that played the role of a father to my son. That's my brother, my dad, things like that. You know, my, my sister's husband, you know, my son looked up to them as a father and I am not the person when, when I had him, I, I feel that we single parents should not be bringing men or women in and out of their children's lives. I think it can cause a lot of confusion. And I did not want my son to be looking to some outsider that I barely even knew myself and feeling like um, whenever somebody left me, like maybe they left him, no. So I was not looking for a father figure for my son, but I was looking for somebody to help me out financially. You know, thank God I had my brother and my dad there who they were, they assisted me for my basic necessities, but I felt like a burden to them. And it was just my basic needs because I, I 
did not have it in me to ask for things that I wanted. So I needed to be able to pay the rent for my crappy little tiny one room that I was renting. My brother provided that I needed to be able to at least buy healthy food for my son. It does not matter whether or not I ate healthy, as long as my son could eat healthy, that was all that mattered. So I, and I was, ne I would neglect everything else as long as the basic necessities of life were taken care of. But I did not want to be in a position where I had to continue to rely on my brother because he also was married and he was growing a family of his own. And I just felt like a burden because, because he, because eventually, okay, so I did my first three years of medical school. I had to drop out because I could no longer afford medical school because certain things in my life happened. Um, I took a year leave from that. And one year leave ended up being four years because I just couldn't get things together. You know, my dad, before, before my dad was a professor in the university and because I was a dependent on him, I ended up, I got free tuition. Everybody, once your family member, if you were a member of staff, all your dependents got to go to university for free. You got tuition exempt. But then the country, the law, the government decided to set up this thing where the government will pay tuition for everybody. So now tertiary education was accessible to every citizen of the country. And um, they, would pay a, they would pay for your tuition and you would, in exchange, you had to work for the, you had to work in the country, whether privately or publicly, as long as you were working in the country, as in, you know, you weren't, you weren't going to get your degree and then migrate to another country, right? So that's how they made their money back, by you serving in the country. And this was for citizens. But I wasn't a citizen. Even though I grew up in this Caribbean island, my parents never intended to live here their entire life. So they never bothered to apply for citizenship. But me growing up here now learning that I don't qualify for this thing because I am not a citizen. So I couldn't, there was no, my dad retired. And because of that law, they, nobody was exempt from tuition via that pathway anymore. Everybody had to go through gate. So it's either you paid cash or you went through the government program. I had no cash and I couldn't go through the government program. So I had to just completely abandon school. Because I, I just couldn't make any money. I, I was tutoring, barely making any money doing that, tutoring both people in person and tutoring people online. And um, I was working in a candy store. Raising a kid is very expensive. And I just couldn't afford anything. Eventually, I managed to go back. I managed to... Um, plead with the university after like four years I pleaded with the university to to allow me to change my status in the university from Nigerian which is what I was born as to Trinidadian which is what I eventually became a citizen after I left university I eventually became a citizen there's there's a law that you can't change your status from because whatever you enter university as is what you have to continue as. So so even if you were, let's say you started university as an American and a couple years in you got married and got Trinidad citizenship, you couldn't change your status to Trinidadian because you started off paying foreign tuition fees and the the government the university makes their money from foreign tuition fees because now everybody had access to university all locals have access to university for free but foreigners pay and that's where we, they make the money from and um because i had a couple of my friends my best friends they too were in the same situation in that um uh they were jamaicans and like my friend her 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 mother is a Trinidadian and her 
her dad is a Jamaican, but she grew up living, she lived her whole life in Jamaica. So she was resident in Jamaica and she came to Trinidad for vet school and she had to pay fees as, as a Jamaican, not as a Trinidadian because she'd never lived in Trinidad. She never contributed anything to Trinidad. But what happened is that, um, the, they worked out, they allowed her to pay partial fees because her father was also the dean of the medical school in Barbados. And because she was also a Trinidad, she was also a Trinidad citizen through her mother, right? And she carried a Trinidad passport, but she was not eligible for the government program. The same with me. I was not eligible, but I ended up after four years of struggling through life and being depressed and feeling like I needed to be saved. I managed to plead with the university to allow me to change my status because they already had my history of my first three years of medical school passing those. Well, my first two years, I dropped out in the middle of my third year. And, you know, I had to promise that I wouldn't fail and I wouldn't waste their time and, and I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't misuse the government's fund. You know, I would only be there for as long as I needed to be there to get my degree. And I guess partly because my father was a retired professor, they agreed to finally change my status because the first time I tried, they didn't change my status. That's before, um, before the four years. But after this time, I don't know why they did it. I don't know who convinced them to do it, but they agreed to finally let me change my status in the university from Nigerian to Trinidadian, which allowed me to be able to access GATE, which is the government program. And um, the deal I made with my brother is that once I, once I was able to cover my own tuition, he would help me with my living expenses, which he did. But I... It was not a fun time in my life. It was a struggle. Medical school on its own is very hard. Going through medical school poor and no help, nobody there to help me with my child because my family had migrated. My sister was here, but she was working and she was married, so she couldn't help me as much as I needed the help. You know, she'd help me every now and then, like, have my son, watch my son while I would have to be on call or have night classes or different things, you know, stuff like that. Eventually, I graduated. I eventually graduated and life changed. I reached a point while I was in medical school, I had to have a serious, my brother had to have a serious conversation with me that, you know, you are not, because I would, I would always call him and be like, I'm, I'm so sad because I was talking to this guy and, you know, and it looked like I thought he was, I thought he wanted to be with me, but then it didn't work out and I don't know what's happening. And he just, he just let me know. It's like, you know, you you are like a liability. You wouldn't, there's, you are not attractive to the type of man that you want right now because you're just not in, he, the way he put it was like, if he was a single man, not related to me, looking to get in a relationship, he would not see me as somebody viable, you know, because there he had, more options and I was the least favorable option out there because I was a single mother, I was depressed, I wasn't taking care of myself, you know, I wouldn't dress nice, I wouldn't wear makeup. Um, I mean, I cut my hair during the COVID season because I couldn't get a haircut anywhere. And I felt like I'd rather have no hair than walk around looking crazy because I had, I had a tapered haircut and I just didn't want to deal with my hair for a while. And, um, at one point in my life, I had, um, 
I was going through so much stress that my hair was falling out and my sister-in-law convinced me to cut off all my hair and she shaved it off for me and I couldn't look at myself in the mirror because I was at the lowest point in my life. I felt hideous and I just didn't, I didn't even take pictures during that time. I just, I, um, it was a very horrible time for me and I always felt like if I were, I wish I acted differently. I wish things were different during that time. And if I ever, if I ever had to cut my hair again, I would embrace it. So I decided, yeah, let me cut it and embrace it. And um, I like it because it's freeing. It's, I don't have to do anything. Um, I mean, it, th I have hair in my head right now, but it was, it was, skin. I cut everything off. But anyway, that's besides the point. The point is, he pointed out to me that I just was not in a, and then also I, be, I failed one exam while I was in medical school, right? One exam, one of my final exams or midterm exams, something like that. And I had to repeat that exam. And in order to repeat it, I had to pay out of pocket to repeat it. Because at that time, the government didn't cover repeats. So my brother ended up having to pay. And it was a lot of money just to write this one exam. And he, he was like, look. If you fail another exam, you're just going to have to find something else to do. You, I, I don't have the money to keep paying for you to be failing exams. And um, I wish I could help you, but I can't. I will pay for you to resit this exam, but that's the end. If you fail again, you're going to have to find something else to do with your life. That put the fear of God in me. So I decided I can't be focusing on men anymore. I can't focus on, I need to focus and finish medical school so that I can provide for my child, at least to provide. And the thing is, when I finally did finish and finally did start working as a doctor, and making more than enough money to take care of myself, my son. I moved out of that crappy place that I was, got a nice apartment. I can do whatever I want to do. My whole perspective on life changed. I no longer felt the need to find a man. I no longer felt like I needed to be saved by a man. I no longer felt because that was the center of why I wanted to be in a relationship. And that was the center of why I was unhappy. Fixing that problem took away my desperation. It took away my unhappiness. I was suddenly free. I didn't need a man for anything anymore. I can do anything that I want and I'm happy. And I feel now like I could be in a relationship and I could not be in a relationship and it doesn't make a difference. And also being a single mother for me became like a blessing because I'm a doctor and I have so many friends, of course, who are doctors as well. And a lot of them had to, the thing is about medicine, if you want to become a top doctor, you have to sacrifice something. You know, it's either family, life, or career. And I had already gone through struggling, raising a son while trying to become a doctor. So, at some point in my life, I wanted five kids. I am very happy with just one child. I do not want any more children. 
What I do want is to give him all the things that he did not have when he was younger because I just simply was not able to and I didn't have the time to because I was trying to make something of myself so that I could provide for him. It was a trade-off. It was either I gave him all my time or I sacrificed some time and become a doctor. And I chose to sacrifice and become a doctor and now I'm devoted to him. But most of my friends, they waited till they got, you know, you, they wait, they're waiting to, to get their career going before they become mothers. But I don't have that because I'm already a mother and I don't have this ticking time bomb. I don't feel like, Oh, I need to make a child because I'm getting old. I don't want any babies in my life except that the babies that I can hold and say, oh, it's so cute, and give right back to their parents. When they start to cry and when they start to act up, go right back to your mommy. You have a cute child that's going to cry in your house and not mine. I love that. And then I feel like a lot of men, younger men or the men in the age range that I'm in, would want to have their own babies. And I don't want to have babies for anybody else. So I don't feel the need to be in a relationship unless it's a guy who does not want kids of his own or a guy who already has kids. So I don't feel that desperation to be in a relationship anymore because some people, some people their drive is this you their desire their desperation to be in a relationship and what's making them unhappy is that they're not married and they don't have kids and they they desperately want to have children so they need to be in a relationship to have children i'm not saying that people should go and have kids out of wedlock i definitely wanted to be married before having a child but it, it did not work out that way in my life. But I thank God now that I did have a child because I really don't care about my biological clock anymore. It could break. It could run out. It could be... I don't care. I don't want to hear anything about a biological clock. I would quicker rip my uterus out before I were to have another baby. This is not to say that I have anything against all you ladies out there who want babies. I think it's having a child is a beautiful thing because I could say that the first time I experienced true love was when I looked at the face of my beautiful baby boy. But I've already experienced that and I, because I struggled so much with him, I don't want... I don't want to do that anymore. I feel like it's time to rest. It's time for me to rest and it's time for my son to rest. So if I have a relationship, fine. If I meet a guy, I'll be, I'm grateful. I'm gr happy about it, but I, I'm not deriving my happiness. I'm not hoping to meet a guy so that I can become happy. And so I challenge you women, you single, wonderful ladies out there who may not be happy right now and because you are single and you're desperate to enter a relationship I challenge you to to sit down and think about what is it that is driving you what what truly do you want that you think that you can get from a relationship because if you cannot be happy with yourself, by yourself, you will never be happy with someone else. It's like what I said. I did not love myself. I felt like I felt worthless and I felt hideous. And I was hoping that being with someone would, would invalidate those feelings. But whenever I did get with someone, I couldn't believe that they believed opposite to what I believed about myself. So it was 
until I changed that, those internal feelings about myself, was I able to accept that it doesn't matter what anyone else in the world thinks about me. Maybe there are people who are watching this video thinking, ugh, she is so whoa, disgusting looking. Who knows? I can't be everyone's cup of tea, neither can you. You know, a friend once told me there is always some for, there is always someone who is tired of even the most beautiful woman out there. You can take the whoever is the most gorgeous woman in the world and there will be at least one man who doesn't want to have anything to do with her. That's just how it is. So can you, do you, is your self-esteem to the floor? Now is the time to start working on that. You have to discover the things that will make you feel worthwhile. You have, it's, it's a long and it's a hard and tedious journey, but you will get there if you put in the work. Is it that you're struggling with finances? What can you do to get yourself in that position where you are able to take care of yourself? You know, maybe a free course. Who do you have in your circle that can give you assistance? I was fortunate enough to have my brother, my family that cared enough for me to at least help me with the basics until I was able to get myself out. The thing is, though, you can't expect somebody to help you if you are not helping yourself. I had to come up with a plan. I came up with a plan of how I was going to get out of my situation. I put that plan forward to the people that were that could help me in my life, and I made a deal with them that that I would accomplish that goal in a certain time frame. And because of that, it was it was almost like a business plan. It was almost like I had to I had, you know, you 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 know when you 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 want to start a business and you're looking for investors, you have to have a business plan. You have to show them that this their investment isn't going to go to waste. And that's what that's what I basically had to do with my life. I had to put forth my, a business plan for my life and prove that that I could accomplish this goal within a certain time frame and their investment wasn't going to go to waste. So you might have to do that too. You know, is it that you your death um if you if you're not a single mother does your desire to be in a relationship and the fact that you're not happy being single stem from the fact that you don't have babies of your own? What can you do if you are financially able, but you don't have, I have a couple friends who make a lot of money. They're big executives, they're lawyers or whatever. And they decided to go and have, get pregnant on their own, you know, pay to get pregnant and have, and now they are happy single mothers. They Whereas I was forced to be a single mother, they were, they chose to be single mothers. Or there's so many, there, there are so many kids out there without parents that need help. Or maybe you might know, you might have a family member with a child that you can mentor, you know, find a way to fill your need, your desires to accomplish those things for yourself so that you can get your own happiness. And once you plug those holes and you address those inherent needs of yours, then you'll find there will be no need to get it from somebody else. What is it that's causing you not to be happy? Fix that. Come up with a plan. You have to plan. Or else you're planning to fail. Fail to plan is the same as planning to fail, right?
reach out to your friends. Don't do this alone. No man is an island. I learned that the hard way, that no man, no woman is an island. And let's see where we can go from there. I, that is it. That's what I have to say. And I hope that even if one person got anything from this video, any encouragement, learned anything, just comment, say hello. Um, let, what are you struggling with? You know, what is it you think would make you happy that you are hoping to get from a man or if you're a lesbian from another woman, you know, um, what is it? So let's maybe get a conversation going. I will respond to you if you write to me, you know, and I'm hoping to use this channel as a way of spreading positivity and motivation and, and little things that, that I saw that was helpful to me in my life in whatever, whatever way it helped me to probably help somebody out there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you watch this video till the end and, um, I hope to see you again in my next video. Please go ahead and subscribe, comment, and like this video. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.